Remember this ultra skinny seven foot one forward who had us all buzzing back in 2014? Yeah, this guy seemed like he stepped onto the court from a basketball time capsule. His moves had us all questioning if he was some kind of future prodigy. Thon Maker, a player who, at the time, had us thinking he was Kevin Durant and Kevin Garnett regen. I mean, he was crossing people over, he was draining threes like it was child's play, he was blocking shots with authority and throwing down dunks on anyone who dared to challenge him. The hype was real. But fast forward to today, and what do we have? Five seasons in the NBA, stints with the Bucks, Pistons, and Cavaliers, and yet he was different from the household name we thought he'd become. Averaging a modest 4.6 points and 2.8 rebounds over 263 regular season games. The question is, what went wrong? Today we're going beyond the surface, unraveling the mystery that is Thon Maker's NBA journey. From four countries to three high schools, chaos is written all over his biography. Stick around, we'll get into that. Background Story Now, before we dive deep, let's rewind a bit. Thon Maker, born in the heat of the Civil War in Wau, South Sudan, faced a childhood most of us can't even fathom. His uncle arranged a daring escape to Uganda, and from there, they found refuge in Australia. A journey that reads like a Hollywood script, but this is Thon's reality. Fast forward to the basketball courts of Perth, Western Australia. Thon began his journey in the game at just five years old. But as he landed in the States, he bounced between schools in Louisiana before finding a home at Carlisle School in Virginia. In his freshman and sophomore years, he was dominating, averaging 22 points, 13 rebounds, and 4.5 and blocks. Thon was putting on a show. He even earned the 2013-14 Gatorade Virginia Boys Basketball Player of the Year honors, leading Carlisle to a state championship. The rise continues. Then in 2014, the Maker Brothers took their talents to the Athlete Institute in Mono, Ontario. It's here that Thon's path intertwines with destiny, and we start to see the emergence of a basketball force. They enrolled in Orangeville District Secondary School, and this became their new stomping ground. In February 2015, Thon reclassified into the 2015 class, and this meant that the 2014-15 would be his final year of high school. He showcased his skills on a global stage at the 2015 Nike Hoop Summit in Portland, Oregon. Thon proved his skill while playing next to Ben Simmons. He got 10 rebounds, 2 points, and a key block helping the world team win a close 103-101 victory over Team USA. The world was starting to take notice. However, just when we thought we had his trajectory figured out, he announced that he would remain in the class of 2016. He was returning to Orangeville Prep for the 2015-16 season. The recruitment battle was intense. Big programs like Arizona State, Florida State, Indiana, Kansas, and Kentucky were vying for his talents. Also, in the mix were Notre Dame, St. John's, and UNLV. Maker continued to turn heads, earning the MVP title at the National Basketball Players Association Top 100 camp. But the biggest move was yet to come. Breaking Barriers In April 2016, he said he would enter the 2016 NBA Draft. This surprised people and needed an official NBA ruling to decide if he could enter. To defy the norm and skip college, he had to convince the NBA that he graduated from Orangeville Prep in 2015. Against the odds, he succeeded, proving he graduated in June 2015. However, he opted for a postgraduate year. This met both the age and one year removed requirements. It paved the way for an unprecedented leap. Coming out of high school, he was hailed as a five star recruit, but as the draft buzz intensified, so did the questions surrounding his age. Thon took center stage at the 2016 NBA Draft Combine. He measured as the third tallest player without shoes at a towering 6 feet 11.75 inches. He also had the highest no-step vertical jump in NBA Draft Combine history, a jaw-dropping 32 inches for a guy over 6 foot 11. But then came the whispers, the skepticism, and the side-eye glances. In the lead-up to the draft, skepticism emerged. Teams started bowing out of the first-round selection race, citing concerns that his age might be fake. Some whispered he might be between 21 and 23, despite official records pegging him at 19. And then an image surfaced, seemingly exposing the truth. People speculated, argued, and debated, but doubts lingered. But here's the truth. 
Thonmaker was indeed enrolled in Ron Moore Catholic College, a high school in Perth, as part of the 2010 graduating class. Around 2010 and 2011, he caught the eye of Edmund Smith, a talent scout with a shady reputation known for working with Sudanese kids. Smith saw Thon's potential but faced a dilemma. The raw, skinny giant was already 18. Sydney Shuffle In the early months of 2011, a mysterious shift occurred. Thon Maker, supposedly 14 years old, emerged in Sydney as a basketball prodigy, joining the St. George Saints U16 Division II squad. No school, just basketball. It was a strategic move, a clean slate away from those who knew him before. The goal behind building credibility around his age, the transition from Perth to Sydney, seemed to carry more than just a change of scenery. Camps in the U.S. became the stage for the emergence of highlight reels showcasing the 8th grader prodigy. Thon officially began 8th grade in the 2011-2012 season. Post that, his academic journey resembled a globe-trotting adventure. Multiple schools in the U.S. and a couple more in Canada. It was a whirlwind of change, but behind the scenes, Smith's plan was taking root. The connection was personal and the investment was significant. However, as we'll soon discover, it might not have been the wisest decision. The plan was in motion, but the age discrepancy became increasingly apparent. Being a raw talent at 21 to 23 is a different ball game from being raw at 19. Draft Day then came the draft night, and with the 10th pick, the Milwaukee Bucks rolled the dice on Thon. But the age debate refused to fade away. But Bucks fans argued it was all smoke and mirrors, that rival teams orchestrated it to crash Maker's draft stock. But Thon Maker hit the ground running in the 2016 NBA Summer League, averaging an impressive 14.2 points and 9.6 rebounds in five games. He snagged a spot on the All NBA Summer League second team. The future seemed bright as Thon signed his rookie scale contract with the Bucks. Now, Kevin Garnett didn't shy away from making a bold proclamation about Thon. Training with a young Aussie in 2017, Garnett was thoroughly impressed. He saw shades of his younger self in Maker and confidently declared him a future MVP and defensive monster. He said, Thon is going to be the MVP of the league one day. Mark it down. He has the bones. He has the appetite to be able to chase something like that. But, as we know, predictions are a tricky game, especially in the ever-evolving landscape of the NBA. Thon Maker, with his quick feet, large wingspan, and shooting touch, had all the qualities one might expect in a future star. However, reality hit hard. Reality Check Thon Maker's journey was far from smooth sailing and one glaring issue stood out, his struggles on the boards. Despite his height and length, he faced challenges in rebounding, primarily due to a lack of strength. Boxing out larger opponents was a big challenge. It left him lacking in positioning and rebounding ability. While his height allowed for occasional reaching over opponents, the fundamentals of boxing out became a weak link in this game. Defensively, Thon's shortcomings extended beyond shot blocking prowess. The lack of quick feet and overall strength hindered his defensive capabilities. In the post, he often found himself overpowered, and this limited his effectiveness in guarding bigger opponents. The laundry list of areas requiring improvement was extensive. The potential was undeniably there, but the clock was ticking. Thon needed to show his skills well. He had to rise above the raw prospect label and tap his untapped potential. As I stated earlier, being a raw talent at 21 to 23 is a different ball game from being raw at 19. And that's where injuries come in. Injuries plagued Thon's journey, affecting his progression from 2018 to 2020. Groin, ankle, and shoulder setbacks became hurdles in the promising career that KG foresaw. The tough climb to the NBA stardom took an unexpected turn, and the lofty prediction of a future MVP became a distant dream. In 2020, Thon Maker suited up for the Cleveland Cavaliers, tallying 3.8 points, 2 rebounds, and .5 blocks in 8 games. He once recorded 5 blocks as a Milwaukee Buck, but he found himself on a journey through Detroit and to Cleveland. His career trajectory seemed uncertain. The narrative about Thon Maker raises a key question. Can high expectations hurt a player's progress? I'll let you be the judge, but the answer lies in the player's ability to handle the pressure and scrutiny that accompany high expectations. Looking at players, like Andrew Wiggins, reveals the subtle link between what's expected and how well they play. While Wiggins faced immense pressure as the number one pick in the draft, a change of scenery allowed him to steadily improve and solidify his role. 
Thon Maker is currently showcasing his talents for the Fujian Sturgeons in the Chinese Basketball Association. It's a new chapter, a fresh opportunity for him to redefine his narrative and leave an impact on a different stage.